Um, the other the other fallacy about what he talked about, what what he suggested, was he's asked an Italian attorney to only talk for twenty minutes. <laughs> so, hot topics for two thousand nineteen is what this comes from that we teach to our other advisors. That's the sound of freedom. Um, Southern California Institute, Shelley runs. It's an organization that has over 300 events a year. Two thirds of those events are to the advisors in the industry that deal with business owners and successful families. Um, a third of the programs are actually to those families and business owners. Um, we have um, also an online tool that um, most of our programs are now seen in the digital world by people who are not physically with us and then that access it in the middle of the night because somebody told them about a monetized installment sale. They've got to go to a meeting and figure out what that is and they want to understand more and they're going to download something that Shelley has up that's a half an hour long on it. Um, Southern California Institute, like I talked about, has those. Um, Strazeri Mancini, the firm that started it all amongst the six brands, um, helps successful families and business owners get to the heart of relevant matters and resolve messes in the areas of estate, business tax, et cetera. So we're counselors by nature. All of my attorneys carry a card that say attorney and counselor at law. Um, if you're in our office, every room has a box of Kleenex in it because there's a decent amount of emotion that comes up when you're considering what to do, either because you're in a mess or you're planning not to be in a mess. And Founders Group helps business owners when they're considering succession. Am I going to gift or am I going to have my children? You can be my son today. All right. Am I going to have my children take over? And what does that look like and who wants to be involved and who doesn't? Am I going to have my key executive that started out with me? And um, we started out together, and, um, but I own the company. Should this person who's given me blood, sweat, and tears have a path into this ownership? And or should some of the team members? Or do we have to go to an outside group of investors for venture capital or money in? And how do you prep for that and what do you do? Most business owners don't sell their business. Why is that? Why, when, when a business owner thinks about selling, and they, and they start the process, why do mis most business owners not sell? Can't give out their control. Can't give out control, it's their personality. I agree with that, what else? Identity. Identity. If you ever walk up to a business owner that started it from nothing, and you walk up to them and you say, who are you, what do you do, or tell me about yourself, they don't usually start out with, hi, I'm Joe, I'm married to Annie, I've got an 18 year old son that's about to go to Gonzaga, and my 13 year old that's about to start at OLP. I spend most of my life with them. They don't usually say that, what do they usually say? What business they started, I have a restaurant group, I started at this, I do that, and then they drift into the rest. There's a lot of their identity. Why else don't they sell? Yes, because here's the math. If I, and I can't do this with, two hand, with one hand, um, if I right now am getting X revenue to my pockets every year after taxes, and I'm getting Y benefits, for a total of Z. If I sell my business and I pay all of you that get a piece of what I sell, because you all have a, a line in there for 1%, 1.5%, 2%, all that other stuff, 7%, et cetera. And then after that, who else gets a piece of my sale? Ah, there's an IRS piece. And who else gets a piece of my sale? The state of California. So I'm giving up a little less than 50% of the sales price and now I've got a bucket. And I walk over to somebody like RJ and I say, I have a bucket now. Invest it for me and you're going to invest it and then you're going to, there's going to be taxes taken out of that investment and net, I'm going to get something. And they do the math and they say, I used to get X net after taxes in my pocket plus Y in benefits, my, my country club membership, my car, the dinners of this, that and the other, although there's less of that these days. Now, instead of getting X plus Y, what are they getting? one half X, which is maybe a third of Y. So economically, it sounds better. Why don't I just keep the damn thing, run it four or five more years, bank the money that I'm getting, and then I can burn the darn thing. So that's why they sell. But math-wise, there is a way to get more, have less cost of transaction, and then the way to invest that has more net tax in your pocket. It's just Unfortunately, most business owners don't get to face or see those other things that somebody like RJ does. So, but the other reasons that we talked about, the identity and the who am I, that stuff, very much so. I sat with a man who um, has his main office in the desert, has something in Orange County. He supplies meats to high-end restaurants, and he has seasonal things that go on as well. 
um, he's considered selling. He has an unsolicited offer for millions of dollars. And his wife got very excited about the millions of dollars number. And then she, they sat with me and I explained what the net was going to be. And I looked at the financial advisor and I said, how much is that going to produce every year? And he said it. And she looked at him and she said, you idiot, why would we sell it? And he said, but you haven't been in the business in years. I'm tired. She said, but we use that money. <laughs> so there's that debate. We're going to talk about successional wealth transfer, capital gains, and income tax options, and asset protection. By the way, who's keeping track of time? So will you let me know at the 10-minute mark, 5-minute mark, and 1-minute mark? You rock. Um, this comes from a presentation. We develop one every year called Hot Topics for that year. This is Hot Topics 2019. We divide it into these three categories each. We talk about families who have assets up to $10 million, the vast majority of Americans, and by the way, the vast majority of small business owners. Assets over $10 million, and then business owners themselves. And we're going to concentrate on the business owner side for just a moment. On succession and wealth transfer, the succession planning, should I plan to transfer to, well, let's see, I started the business, you've worked with me for years, over 20 years, it's grown, I've been paying you more, but clearly you know that I have more, and I've been paying myself more, and I own the business. How do I keep you there? Do I just pay you $10,000 more each year? How do I pay you more? That was extra pieces that fell off of me. <laughs> How do I pay you more? What? Equity. You want equity? Yeah. Should I give him equity? Yeah. yeah, who said yeah? The one who has equity in one of my brands now. Because <laughs> we worked together for how many years before you got equity in one of the brands? Yeah. Well, you're more likely to stay after equity? Look at her, and I'm her boss, so she's going to be quiet. But we're partners, too, in one of the brands. We're partners in Founders Group. So, yes. How much equity should I give him? Should I give it to him, or should he earn it? Now remember, my son's over here. You work in the yeah, business too. David's over here saying, wait a minute. I'm sorry, what is your name, young lady? Cheryl. Cheryl, can you be his sister? Sure. Okay, we did a DNA test and you guys want to know what happened. <laughs> but we've been calling your brother and sister for all these years. Um, you work in the business too. He came, you, you were going through college when we were still, when we were working together and you now work in the business. You have a depart. Do you want him to get the equity or you? Uh, you don't work in the business, but your husband wants to work in the business. Because you are mad at me because I wasn't home for all the things you wanted me to, and I missed the recital thing and the cheerleader thing, and I missed when you were the superstar at the, at the sporting event. And you remember that. You were only eight when it happened, but you're really bothered about this. So you have told your children you'll never work in the family business because you wanted to be dedicated to your children. At that Christmas party, I sulked off to the kitchen saying I needed wine crying because it hurt my feelings because I thought you didn't think, you thought I didn't want to be with you. But really, honey, back in those days, that, that year, we almost lost the business. We almost went bankrupt, and I was working really hard. So what the heck am I going to do with you three? <laughs> Somebody help me. What am I going to do with him? Now, the great likelihood is he's not leaving. Is that fair? Yes or no? Is it possible that that guy over there, I don't know, where's the restaurateur? That guy over there has realized he's a powerhouse. He's a, he's a chief of staff. This man will make his life easy tomorrow morning. He's expensive, but he gets to see his wife and kids if he hires this guy. Is that fair? By the way, the position that Shelley ran into was chief of staff. We don't call it that. We call it executive director, right? She has the big sword that can lop people's heads off. So what do I do? Help me. Come on, you have friends in exactly this position. What do you do? What? Dialogue. Did you tell me to die? Dialogue. <laughs> Dialogue. Oh. <laughs> I thought he said die alone. <laughs> That's my current plan. I'm going to die and they'll figure it out. Shelly's my wife. Honey, it's your mess to deal with. <laughs> what am I going to do? What am I going to do? You know, I can run it without him, but when I dropped out for my massive heart attack and six bypasses at 38, which is a true story, and I did drop out of my business for three months, my partner Steve ran everything. So he's an employee currently, but when I dropped out for those three months, because I had a major health event, so I go spend and I got well, and your mom made me slow down. But 
we would have lost the business but for him. He knows that, but I've never told him. I've told him I can do it without him. It's no big deal, and it pisses him off. What am I going to do? Yeah, I could. Yeah, I could do some. I, I could do some. I could give you stock. I could have you earn stock. I could start an ESOP with the whole company, but I'm going to hate that in about three years. Yeah. Right? So what am I going to do? I could do a golden handcuff. I could tell him he gets a percentage of profit, and I could back out his. So whatever profit he gets, 10% of it this year. I give him in cash 5% of it, and I bank it for three years if he's still there three years later. So he's constantly got profit money banked. Do you like that plan? He, Equ what? Equity is another love child. Oh, he's back to equity. Oh, I have this thing, this synthetic thing that he was talking about. How, co how about something called phantom stock? Do you like that word, that no, phrase? No, it, it doesn't do it for but it kind of does it for me because I'll tell him the company's worth X. As the company grows in value, if we sell, you get a percentage of everything over X. You don't invest it in any stock. If you leave me, if you leave me, you probably lose that. You'll vest at percentages of it over time. And if we sell ahead of time, you vest in it all and you get your percentage. So if I sell, you get it all up front. Is that sounding better or worse than the extra money? Now he wants both. <laughs> Cheryl, how are you feeling about this? Oh, I don't know. Are you knowing something about my gone? Have you and mom had a conversation? Because mom, what do you think about giving away some of the company equity? When I, Me? Yeah. Yeah, yeah your mom. Um, well, I think my, my baby's hurting. My baby's. <laughs> You're working in the company. <laughs> You're not. My baby's deserve. Did you like the baby's comment? <laughs> This is what business owners face all the time on succession planning. You've got to go out there and get a valuation to figure out what this is. I've got to find a way to keep a good person, or I've got to start planning on that person not being there. Um, sis, do you think David could grow to be enough to be the guy that he is? Well, You're in the family meeting with RJ. So. Uh, how do you feel about that, David? <laughs> I'm not happy. Mom, how are you feeling? Well, Mom, RJ asked you, Mom, could you just take over and run him? Can take over the business and run him and him and cover the, can you do that? <laughs> RJ, how you feeling about that? <laughs> All you need is a good set of advisors. So we have some of those. Can you see some of your friends who have small businesses in this middle of this mess? Yeah. Um, by the way, if I if we do do this stock thing and you have you own thirty percent, if you die, can you be his wife for a few minutes? Um, did you plan on being partners with did you plan on being partners with her? So do I have to write some special stuff in the stock that if he dies that we get to buy it back so she's not left out in the cold but we get it back? RJ, do you know what to do about that? Because the company might not have a money. Do you want the company stock or do you want the cash? <laughs> You've been looking for the stock this whole time. And what did she say right out of the gate? So can I, can I come back to you? I'm negotiating with him. Can I invite you on the long weekend that we talk about this? RJ is going to invite us all for a long weekend, your husband and your, your wife and you guys and you and your wife and, and um, Shelly and myself. And he, we're going to facilitate. And w during the break for the bathroom, because you said, I need to go to the bathroom, can we take a break? Did we get him to go take a break? And did you advise him to take the cash or stock? And she, she's, she's thinking about where's the company going. She's thinking about where the company's going. The data she has on where the company's going, is it from the business advisor, from you, from you in the business, or from you or from me? Where's it from? Husband. How accurate is that data? It depends on whether you trust your husband enough. <laughs> Even if you trust him a lot, might he skew it a little bit when he tells you about it? Sure. Do you want to look good in front of her? Do you want to make him look better than you? Him better than me. <laughs> <laughs> so at the end of the day, you've got to look at increasing enterprise value. You've got to look at the five stages of business. There's 10 different exit options and what you've got to go through. 
on this chart, I will tell you to make the business worth more money, I need to move from stage one to stage five. Because if this business is all dependent upon me, it's worth less. The more it's dependent upon you and you, the more it's worth. You, the wife of him, you like this chart because it shows your husband moving up. Is that fair? You see the opportunity to take over for dad and get me the hell out of the way because I always can do it better than you. And you've been concerned about your husband entering this business altogether. And the reality is you and mom have talked. As soon as I'm disabled, you two are taken over. Because <laughs> you think, you know you can do it better. And all the 10 business options, how do you go through all that? God, whoever knew there were 10? There are all these considerations about capital gains and income taxes while you're doing it and when you're going to sell it. And most of these things, how many of you have heard of at least half of these things? 20% of the room? How do you figure out if you should do the others? By the way, if you do the others, people make lots of money other than you. So the guy that was sitting in front of me yesterday, he knows if he does this thing, other people will make hundreds of thousands of dollars out of the sale. So he's trying to figure out how to get most debt for him. He wants people to make money, but not so it's less to him. Is that fair? And what was his wife's answer? <laughs> Very similar. She looked over and she said, why are we selling the business again? We're going to go from this much income a year to this much income a year? We spend that money. So you have to balance all these things out. Are you starting to see how families go through a lot of strife when they talk about succession? Asset protection. There's a continuum of asset protection. Most of you have this. Most of you are at least a, a quarter of the way up the, the line. You, you drove here today, right? If you got in a car accident, would you pay for it? Yes or no? Who pays for it? Insurance. I recently, when my wife, I'm sorry, when I went down to um, get my loaner car over at Lexus, they asked for my insurance card. So I had to give them my new insurance card. Do you know that we insured the two vehicle, one vehicle we sold and one field that got totaled and the two new vehicles were not on our policy? Because our insurance agent got all the data, the person taking care of them that was new filled out all the forms, I signed and everything else went through and the two new cars aren't insured. Does that scare the hell out of anybody but me? My boat, which I just sold, a 44 footer, wasn't insured for a whole year. Be careful with your insurance, thank you. Some of you have corporations or LLCs. Some of you have partnerships. Some of you um, have joint bank accounts, that's really bad. You've done some asset protection planning or not, and very few people reach into this area. You can protect your assets. You can, I can, if I formed a trust for myself here in California, does that asset, does that asset protect my assets? Yes or no? No. Most of you have a revocable living trust, does that protect you? No. If one spouse dies, it should protect half. By the way, if you have an AB trust or an ABC trust, that B part you no longer need because now it's no longer about avoiding the state tax and you're going to lose the second step up in basis. So if you have one of those, go see RJ and have them send you to somebody to fix it. But the planning that you have in place may not be appropriate, right? Um, it's very common to have, for people who have a business, to have their assets in a Nevada trust, but to have their business assets inside of something else or a separate subcategory of it because of being sued. I'm less worried about them getting you finally. I'm more worried about the lawsuit. When you lock into an attorney like me, I'm a recovered litigator. Is the first question, tell me how you've been wronged? No. The first question is, whoever wronged you, do they have lots of money? And can I get to it? So it's a matter of protecting. So we've talked about the struggles that business owners have. Not only, and we talk about taxation or not, and who do you tax and where do you spend? And we had a conversation, there were three or four things in here about that. I will tell you, I have affluent families and business owners leaving California in droves. I probably have in our practice alone, 50 high net worth families with businesses leaving California because the taxation in California is just friggin' miserable. Now, I can talk to them and I can say, the income you get in other states, I can form another trust in Nevada and not have a tax here, please stay. I can, if you're in Los Angeles, 
get you to a group to, that will then go to the, the county taxation and get them to tax you less and go to the power authority and get you to pay less on your power because they want you to stay in Los Angeles County because they want their people to be employed. So it's a great public program that they're running to keep people, to keep business owners like me in Los Angeles County so the, the, let's say the 40 I employ or the 400 I employ still have jobs. So sometimes you're looking at making sure a business stays in order to keep the employment, not just to shave for profits for somebody else. So this is the kind of stuff that business owners go through. But I'll get, through, get to the first part first again, which is, or last again, it's usually about the family dynamics on what you do or not and how do you share. There's a big movement out there for equity plays to spread that wealth, and that's a good thing. But if you're going to do that with equity play, how do you make sure the people stay loyal? Because I have an entire labor pool coming up right now that plans on having seven to ten jobs during their life. As an owner, if I think he's going to have three more jobs, do I want to give up equity? Do I want him to be my partner but no longer working with me? So there's that dichotomy that we have to work with. Small business drives America. Thank you all very much for your time.